painting update. Womp womp, still stuck. <laughs> friends welcome back i'm tracy l turner and this is another episode of my art vlog so before i get into anything i'm just gonna go ahead and point out that i am in my pajamas okay <laughs> it is super late and i didn't think that i was gonna have another chance to film this week so here we are just gonna just go for it do it now what you see is what you see <laughs> so yeah today we're going to go into palettes and just pros and cons of the different type types that I've tried and the way that I set up my own palette to paint so I'm going to try to go through this relatively quickly um but yeah we'll see how that goes <laughs> about a year ago I did a similar video to this topic it was but it was basically just a snapchat story that I strung together and posted on YouTube <laughs> it's fine if you want to look at that I mean I will link it down to it if you feel like seeing that bullshit but <laughs> this is the updated better version a little more in-depth version so let's go ahead and get into that I prefer to use paper palettes, personally. Yes, paper palettes. Probably a bad thing. I know they're so wasteful, but they work for me. And that's kind of the whole point of this whole thing. There are different versions of palettes out there, and none of them are really, I don't know, better than the other per se. It just depends on the type of painter and the type of worker that you are. If you're like me and you're a little lazy, you don't, you're not really good at cleaning up <laughs> after each painting session or what have you. A uh, paper palette might be the way to go. The type that I use is this kind of gray uh, paper palette. Um, I don't know if this is the only brand. It probably isn't, but it should say somewhere on the palette pad that it is gray. Or you can just open it up, <laughs> and I, I guess, and make sure that it's gray it looks like this paper palettes or paper but it has a coating on it so uh, it makes the paper smooth and um, non-absorbent so your paints don't basically just ruin soak into the paper and ruin it uh, yeah it, this works for me because it's just super easy to clean up um, when I'm done I just rip out the paper, throw it away, and it's a brand new sheet for me to use. Um, I mean, if you're really not into the waste, then maybe paper palettes aren't for you. I personally don't mind it. <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I definitely wouldn't say that I'm an environmentalist or anything, so whatever. <laughs> but that's what I use. Uh, I would say the downside to using these is that, I mean, it's paper, so it's weak. And so if you're someone that's a bit heavy-handed, you mix your paint kind of roughly, or you use uh, palette knives pretty consistently or aggressively, I mean, you run the risk of ripping through the palette, and I mean, it's probably still usable, but probably very cumbersome, and it's just not really worth it. Another type of palette that is available are these. I'm sure you guys have seen this in some form of fashion. Uh, these are basically what people associate, uh, the type of palette that people associate with artists stereotypically. You know, the Picol, I am a artiste. Uh, you know, <laughs> with the beret, <laughs> thin mustache, standing in an easel painting. These are you guys. Uh, I don't know if there's a special name for it other than just, I don't know, palette, hand palette. I don't know. Uh, but the way it works is that uh, you have this small hole here, and that's where your thumb 
goes in. And there will always be some sort of groove or, or, or something along that same edge that you can grip with the rest of your hand. And you just paint. You put your colors uh, along the side here, wherever is comfortable, and you mix within the center there. Uh, so, I mean, I don't have anything really bad to say about this type of palette, except maybe your arm might get tired after a while holding it, or your, your fingers maybe might get a little cramped or uncomfortable. Uh, you, you will have to clean this type of palette. So, you know, you don't want the paint to dry on to it, and then you can't scrape it off, and you kind of ruin their surface. It's not, the whole point of this is that it's smooth, and it's handheld, and it's just convenient. Uh, I think if you're someone that um, likes to stand and paint, this is a good choice. Or um, say uh, you like to be a little more... Uh, a little closer to your paints uh, it's super easy to sit here and mix you don't have to be leaning over anything or struggling to find the right height of table <laughs> to lay your palette on it's just you just load this thing up put it in your hand and go for it go for it I mean you can lay this on a table if you want I think it's kind of defeats the purpose though because <laughs> you're the point is to hold it in your hand. Um, but I mean, hey, it's use their own, whatever works for you. That's the whole point. I mean, these are found in most art supply stores, Michaels, you know, just anywhere that sells uh, you know, artist supplies. And um, yeah, that's the gist of that, I think. Another type of palette that I know is out there and that I've used myself are glass palettes. Oh well, yes, just straight up clear glass palettes. Now, I mean, that's something that you can probably find and cut your own or go to Home Depot or something like that. Or if you have an old mirror that you could use. Um, personally, I think those are probably the best palettes, glass palettes, because the surface is super smooth. It's so easy to mix paint on top of you you don't run the risk of destroying it i mean unless you, you just i don't know toss it around <laughs> you're just super rough with your shit but um i mean it's glass so it is liable to break but if as long as you're using it to mix paints it shouldn't be an issue uh you can um place them in something that's called a palette box which is this type of thing um, I put a paper palette in there, but, uh, yeah, they come, uh, I think this is a 12 by 16 size palette box and they come with a lid. The only brand that I've seen that makes these is Masterson. It says it on the top there. If there are any other brands, I mean, I don't know. I just know that this is the main one. And again, you can find these at most art supply stores. And um, they even have some that are made for acrylics. So the difference between the acrylic palette boxes and the acrylic, the oil palette boxes and the acrylic palette boxes are the acrylic um, boxes. You need a special sponge and paper to go inside of it. And what you do is you wet both. The sponge and the paper and the moisture from those uh, objects will keep your acrylic paints fresh so you're not you don't have to use any extra mediums to preserve the wetness of it or spray it every 20 seconds to make sure your paint doesn't dry out that sponge and paper um, the, the moisture that's held within that will be enough to keep your acrylic paints fresh. Um, the oil paint boxes do not come with those papers because you don't need them. Oil paints stay wet, I mean, several times longer than acrylic paints do. So um, the bonus to having a palette box is that it comes with a lid and when you're done, you just seal it up, it's airtight, and your paints don't dry out, uh, at least not as quickly. 
Uh, so that's what I use. I set my paper palettes inside of the palette box, load up my paints, and go. And with glass palettes, you can place them inside of the palette box and do it that way. Um, but yeah, I, did, I think the downside to glass palettes, again, is the cleanup factor. If you're not good at keeping your surface smooth and, and clean, and I mean... It just leaves the paint residue on there and it dries up and gets cakey and you just lose that smooth surface. Uh, I think another downside is that there probably if you don't cut your own or have your own glass just hanging out somewhere, they can be the most expensive. So another thing to keep in mind about palettes or, or just when you're painting in general is lighting. Natural light is probably best <laughs> if you could ever have that. Uh, if you if you're painting at night, like usually I do, um, you will want to get a type of bulb or lamp that uh, mimics natural light that closely mimics natural light. That way, you know you're getting the the purest <laughs> colors. And um, I would say, so using a regular light bulb, they tend to skew a bit warm. So that's something to keep in mind when you're mixing paint. Is, uh, a lot of times, I mean, unless you just have a super great eye <laughs> and you're just prodigy at mixing color, if you use a regular bulb, your colors m may tend to end up on the warmer side uh, accidentally. So it's always best to have the closest to white light that you can. So now let's look at uh, an old palette of mine just to give you an idea of how I set myself up and what that looks like. All right, so what we're looking at here is an older palette of mine. I think I've used this for the last two paintings that I worked on. And, uh, yeah, so this is, I mean, a typical way that I'll set up my palette. So, uh, I'll start, I'll have the brighter colors one way, and the darker colors uh, another way. And then in the center is where all the color mixing happens. Now, this is definitely not something that you have to stick to. It's a tip that I learned so many years ago when I was going to more workshops and classes. And the significance of it is basically just to keep you organized. There's, that's really it. There's no really big important reason behind doing that. You can obviously set up your palette any way that you would like, whatever is comfortable. It's just that when I was learning, um, that was just a tip that was given to me and by habit, that's just how I set up now. Now I will tend to use the same colors each time. Every now and then, depending on where the color scheme I use, um, uh, skews, I will swap out a color here or there, but for the most part, I tend to stick with the same setup. And, um, I mean, just if you just want to know what I'm using here or what I used here, this is just regular titanium white. I believe this is radiant yellow, cadmium yellow medium. This is permanent green white, I believe. Yep. Uh, this is, I think this is cerulean blue. This is a permanent rose color. This is azo coral by m graham i think that's how you pronounce that azo coral and this is a cadmium red medium along the side here this is Payne's gray the pain gray which is a newer color i'm trying out it's not as harsh as an ivory black but you can still get some really pretty uh cooler colors with that uh, this is ultramarine blue. This, I believe, is 
um, snap meridian maybe <laughs> don't quote me on that uh this is dioxin purple and alizarin crimson and usually with this particular setup i'm able to mix almost whatever i want <laughs> i mean i don't think it takes much more than you know, these colors really i mean unless you're just such a stickler for um, using a bunch of different colors. But I think if the, the better you get at color mixing, the less paints that you'll need. You're just able to get what you need with just a few foundation colors and a couple of uh, colors to work on to, to mix your uh, lights and darks. So yeah, this is normally my setup and this beautiful mess here is just uh, all the mixing that I did. That's my process, uh, my footsteps, all right there. All right, that about wraps things up, I think. So uh, I hope you enjoyed and learned a little bit about palettes and are able to kind of think a little bit more about uh, a system that may work for you. Uh, as usual, I am always open to questions or suggestions. And uh, shit, maybe you might have a tip that I can use. Maybe there's something I missed. Please let me know. I would love to hear what you have to say. Um, other than that, if uh, you want to find me anywhere else, you please follow me on Instagram. It's at Tracy L. Turner. Or uh, check out my website, TracyLTurner.com, where that's the one-stop shop for basically everything. So my artwork is on there, blog, links to all my other social media spaces, and a bunch of other cool stuff. So definitely check out either one of those. And... Yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, if you enjoyed something out of this, definitely like the video, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Let's keep this conversation going. What do you think about palettes? What do you use? What don't you use? <laughs> what do you like? What do you dislike? All that good stuff. I would love to hear it. Okay. All right. Until next time, everybody. See ya. I'm off to bed. <laughs>